Can AI design a subwoofer box? Let's find out. To get a frame of reference, we're going to compare this to my cut sheet generator that's on my website, DIYAudioGuy.com. So all you do is head over there and find the calculator and you just enter some parameters. We're gonna do an enclosure width of 24 inches a height of 14 inches, so something that would fit a 12 inch subwoofer. Now we're gonna input a maximum allowed depth. So whatever that happens to be for your situation, let's say 24 inches, just have a number to start with. And then we tell it how wide we want the port. In this case, I wanna make the port two and a half inches and let's make the box two cubic feet internal volume and tune it to 36 Hertz. It defaults to a material thickness of 0.75 inches. We're gonna leave it there. We're gonna leave the double baffle box unchecked. We're going with a single baffle. This website lets you put in the mounting depth of the subwoofer because there's an error check in my algorithm. It should throw back an error code if the box isn't deep enough. More on that later. Same thing for the subwoofer cutout diameter, the number of subwoofers and the outside diameter of the subwoofer. If you try to put two 12 inch subwoofers in a 10 inch wide box, it's going to throw an error code. Then I want to check this box right here. Hit this check box right here if you don't have access to a router. Leave it unchecked if you want a more complicated design. Then just hit the generate and we're off and running. And we get 24 by 14 by 18. Our target airspace was two cubic feet. We overshot that by just a hair. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. This right here is the cut sheet. The first thing you're going to notice is everything is rounded to the nearest quarter of an inch. I designed this tool with the beginner in mind. I want to make this easy as possible for someone to take this cut list, grab a circular saw with an edge guide and make these cuts on their own. This box is designed to be easy for you to build. The calculator assumes that you're going to be using one window brace. That brace is either going to be the same size as your first port wall or the same size as one of your sides. This part right here is important. It's going to give you the port dimension. So two port walls, the first one 13 and a quarter inches, the second one nine and a half. Here's a model of the enclosure in SketchUp. Pretty much all of the parts are going to be the exact same height, 12 and a half inches. That's the interior height of the enclosure. Two and a half inch wide port. The calculator is designed to take into account the port geometry as you go into the bend and it's designed to take into account the length of the material thickness as well. Because everything is right to a quarter of an inch, this second port wall might not be the exact right length, but again, it's designed to be easy to build and it's going to get you to a reasonable margin of error. Now, now the question is, if we put the same information into AI, what kind of results do we get? If I give AI a prompt and the AI prompt doesn't give me the result that I need, I can always go back and argue with the AI, tell it it's wrong and it will eventually bend to your will. But that only works if you know the AI gave you a bad answer. So I'm going to go at this from the perspective of someone that does not know how to design an enclosure, someone that might take that first result from the AI and trust it. Because there's no doubt in my mind that you can sit down and spend three or four days arguing with the AI and eventually it's going to give you a box design. But you're not going to know to do that or even how to do that unless you already know how to design the box in the first place. So we're going to give it a simple prompt and see how well it performs. First up is Claude, I've started a whole new chat window that's independent of any previous chat, so Claude should have no active working memory of any conversations I've had with Claude in the past. I'm going to hit the go button and we're going to sit back in real time and see what happens. Okay, it is crunching. Man, it looks like it's doing something. It looks like it is giving you a lot of good information. It's got the specifications. It has taken into account the thickness of the material. It's giving me a cut list. It's giving me instructions on how to assemble the box. Um, construction tips like using dado joints and bracing. It's telling me to use two inch wood screws. Okay, I think we've got it. It has given me a tuning frequency. It's given me the negative three dB down point. That's something we could verify. So we have our first problem right here. Claude did not make the net internal volume two cubic feet. Now I didn't tell it to, I just gave it two cubic feet. Claude did not know that that's the internal airspace. Claude botched the port. The port height should be 12 and a half inches in order to make that port the same height as the rest of the box. Yes, you can make it 12 inches, but you would have to do some extra woodwork to pull that off. And the port length is 7.5 inches to get that 36 hertz tuning frequency. Let me pop over to my port calculator on my website. We're gonna go with two cubic feet, 36 hertz, one port and 12 inches, which is what Claude has, and two and a half inches wide, which is what I asked Claude to do. And I'm gonna hit the shared wall slot port because we're trying to make a slot port enclosure. I even told Claude that. And I'm gonna hit calculate. This port should be 25.4 inches long. Claude is giving 
giving us 7.5 inches. So Claude's port is not just wrong, it is off by a wide margin. Hang on, let me double check something. I might have messed up. Let's do 1.85 cubic feet and hit calculate. And now we're at 27.93, so a little bit longer. Claude didn't work. Now, yes, you could go back in and you could tell Claude that it's wrong. Tell Claude to make the port 12 and a half inches tall. Tell, tell Claude to make the internal box two cubic feet and see what it does. In fact, why don't we do that? I'm going to go in and have a little argument with Claude. All right, so I've told I've told Claude that it's made some mistakes. We're gonna hit enter and see if it will fix something. And of course it agrees with me. They always do. It's accounted for the material thickness and the total port volume is a hair bigger. And it's given us dimensions. It's working on the depth. External of 24 by 14 by 15.4. It's still not matching my calculations. I got an external depth of 18 inches. So the box is still gonna come back too small. The port component is four pieces. It seems to be wanting to build a port inside of the enclosure. Port length of 6.8 inches. Again, the port has to be considerably longer than that. So Claude does not pass. Next up is chat GP. This is the new version 5.0 that just came out a few days ago. This is the pro version that costs about 20 bucks a month. Once again, I've made sure that it's not going to reference any previous conversations I've had with it. I'm going to give it the exact same prompt, see what it does. It likes to think longer for a better answer. It seems the big difference between Claude and ChatGPT is Claude's gonna put something on the screen to give you something to look at and keep you, I don't know, entertained, while ChatGPT is just gonna give you this vague planning the port divider or whatever the case. All right, two cubic feet, 24 inches wide, 14 inch exterior. So its external dimensions are once again too short. I came with 18 inches, it comes up with 16.875. 0.875, what is that? Is that seven eighths of an inch? Now one thing I find interesting, it's given me a port physical link with a 27.6 inch center line. This tells me that it has probably remembered a past conversation that I've had with it about the correct way to design and lay out a port. So I'm not sure that this is a completely unbiased test. So this did better than Claude. I'm gonna give it a provisional pass. Claude was so off that it wasn't worth the time to drop the dimensions into SketchUp to see how it played out. I'm gonna do that here and pause for just a second and I'll show you those results just a bit. Okay, so I have drawn it out in SketchUp and the good news is it's actually not that bad. I calculated the internal airspace and it's just shy of two cubic feet. So the airspace is correct. So Chet GPT did a better job of calculating airspace than Claude. Where it went wrong though is the port. This segment is 15 and three eighths of an inch. This segment is 16 and a quarter of an inch. And after you account for the bend here in the enclosure, the effective port length is 34.125 inches. If we put in the numbers and compare that to my port calculator, we're in up with um, 25.4 inches so the port turned out to be about 10 inches too long there's no doubt in my mind that you could go in and have an argument with chat GPT and eventually convince it to make the port the right size but you wouldn't know to do that unless you knew it was wrong so you still need tools to check and verify that chat GPT can do it so if you need a tool to verify that it can do it, why do you need ChatGPT in the first place? Next up is Grok. We've asked the AI to not reference any past conversations. So once again, copy and paste the exact same prompt, hit the button, see what happens. Much like Claude, Grok is gonna talk to me and tell me what it's doing, whereas ChatGPT just sat there and ran kind of silently. Grok is making some assumptions. It's going to assume that the subwoofer itself is gonna displace a 10th of a cubic foot. Grok has noted we need a net volume of two cubic feet. Grok is taking into account some bracing. So Grok is beating Claude for sure. It's gonna show us the math. It's gonna design the port. I'm a little bit confused with this port length calculation. It's clearly using a formula for a round port. That pi is a surefire sign that we're doing something with a tube. So it's given us almost a 30 inch port length which we know already is too long so it's already going to give us the wrong size port port starts at the front baffle two and a half inches wide by 11 and a half inches tall we know it needs to be 12 and a half inches tall it's giving us a cut list 24 by 14 back panel the same top panel 15 inches by 20 it's including a brace in the cut list that's good 
There's our summary of our cut list right there, looking nice. Once again, assembly notes, glue and screw, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's go to SketchUp and let's see how this works. I'm gonna stop the video for a second and go do that. Okay, this is what Grok gave me. And the big obvious mistake is these side panels are the wrong size. It asks for a 13 and a half inch by 15 inch side panel, but it sticks up too far. This side panel should be 12 and a half inches. I'm not sure what happened there. So the side panel was wrong. And the port height was the same height as that side panel. The box is 14 inches tall, so the port's got to be 12 and a half inches tall. And so you've got to do that math, apparently. You've got to tell it it's a 12 and a half inch tall by two and a half inch wide port, specifically, or it's not going to give you the result. It did not fold the port inside the enclosure. It gave me one long piece for the port, 27 and a quarter inches. We needed a port that was 25.4 inches, so it missed the port length, but not by much. That's uh, reasonable margin of error. And then it added this horizontal port top that I'm just not sure what it's there for. As far as checking the airspace and the port tuning, we really can't do that because Grok didn't fit the port inside of the box. So Grok fails as well. And again, I know you're going to jump in the comments and tell me that you could go in and have an argument with the AI, but the reality is you're not going to know it's wrong unless you know it's wrong. AI is going to hallucinate. It's going to give you a bad answer. Moving on to Google Gemini. So like Grok, and Claude, Gemini is going to be talking to you while it thinks. And already we see a problem. So it's giving us a top panel, bottom panel, and side panels, and then it's giving us a port. It looks like it's trying to tell us to use wood to make the port as opposed to using the wall of the box as one of the port walls. 10.75, two and a half, 12 inches deep. I can already tell you that it's got the port tuning wrong. I don't have to even check. All right, let's see if I can figure out what this is and draw it out in SketchUp. While I'm doing that, I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Without the support of these patrons, I wouldn't be able to afford to host a website that's free and available to all of y'all out there. If you would like to see more tools like this, you can help me out by joining these guys over on Patreon. And a big bonus shout out to Jonathan, Tony, Taylor, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo. This is the box that Jim and I would give us. It's a lot shallower, which tells me that something's at least different, if not wrong. The interior volume of the enclosure is 22 and a half by 12 and a half by 12, 1.9 cubic feet, so undersized just a tad. But you'll notice this thing right in here. What in the world is that? Well, that is the port. So instead of using the walls of the enclosure as a port, Jim and I wants me to construct a separate port that you can kind of really put anywhere in the enclosure and construct it out of MDF like this. This piece right here takes up about 0.2 cubic feet. So the reality is this is going to be about a 1.75 cubic foot enclosure. The port cross section turns out to be two and a half by 11. So two and a half by 11 gives us 27 and a half square feet of port area. Let's go to the port calculator and see what that gets us. So here's my slot port calculator. So for this box, we need a port that's over 28 inches long. Let's check out the length of the port. It's 10 and three quarters inch long. That is not right. That box is not gonna get you what you're looking for. Now I fully expect people to be down in the comments right now saying, yes, AI can do this and I'm entering the wrong prompt. But the point of the video is to show you that AI really can't do it unless you already know how to do it. If you don't know how to check that AI gave you the right box, then you're not going to be able to give AI the prompt to give you the right box. And if you know how to check that AI gave you the right box, you don't need AI. You've got other tools that you can use to get the box right. That's why I built this website. I wanted to give you tools so that you could design and build your own subwoofer enclosure. My long range plan is to build this out into something bigger and better. That's going to take a little bit of time. In the meantime, all it can do is generate a cut list. But it's not just your boring everyday cut list. The goal here is to give you something that's practical, something that's relatively easy to build. This L port right here is very straightforward and easy to build. It takes advantage of the existing walls of the enclosure to build part of the port and it solves all the math for you. It's got the port geometry worked out for you so you'll get the right port length to get the tuning frequency that you're shooting for. Not only that, the website assumes you're going to want some bracing. It's done the math and it assumes that you're going to use four corner 45s inside of the enclosure. It assumes you're going to have some type of brace in the middle of the enclosure like this window brace right here. It also assumes you're going to use a pair of cleat style braces like this one right here. This is my favorite type of brace. They're great for strengthening your walls so your panels don't resonate and they're practical and easy to build. A design like this one on the screen takes a router to build. If you don't have a router, no problem. Just hit this no router cut list checkbox so you don't need to flush trim that router opening. 
You can build this enclosure with a jigsaw, a circular saw, and an edge guide. This looks really simple on the surface, but running behind the scenes that you can't see is an iterative solving algorithm that's going to ensure that you get really close to your target airspace, plus or minus a reasonable margin of error. To use the calculator, you just simply decide how wide you want your enclosure to be. So enter your enclosure width, decide how tall you want your enclosure to be. You got to make it tall enough to fit your subwoofers, but there's an error check. So if your enclosure is not tall enough or wide enough for your subwoofers, it's going to kick back an error message. You're going to give it a maximum depth. And if that maximum depth is too shallow for your required airspace, it's going to kick back an error message. The only real math you have to do is that port width. What I recommend you do is just pick a port width and the calculator will give you your port area. And if it's not big enough, go back and make the port wider and hit the run button again. So we'll do a three inch port. We'll make it three cubic feet. We'll tune it to 34 hertz. We'll hit the double baffle button. So we have a second baffle. Let's say we're using sub Subwoofers have a four inch mounting depth and say a six inch cutout. Say you're using a six and a half inch subwoofer and you want to run four of them and they've got a seven inch outside diameter. We hit generate cut list and we get an error message because this box isn't wide enough for four six and a half inch subwoofers. That's an easy fix. We're going to go in and kick up the width a little bit and hit the generate button again. Now it's given us the total external dimensions. It's given us 2.998 cubic feet of airspace and that's after taking into account the internal bracing. And we got a 25 and a half inch port cross sectional area. The cut list is going to give us a top and a bottom that's going to be the full width of the enclosure and the full depth of the enclosure. Then all the the other pieces for our no router cut list are all going to be the same height in this case eight and a half inches and feel free to double check the math and if you find an error you can shoot me an email my email address is on the website in this case it's going to require one port wall that's 12.75 inches long and then it's going to give us some advice as for our window brace there's two ways to do this if you have an l-shaped port you can use a port that's the same length as that port wall and it's designed so that the port wall and the brace together uh, serve as a a tool for positioning the brace to make sure it's in the right spot in the box. In this case where there's no second port wall, you can make braces that are the same width and height as the sides of the enclosure, which is what was done in this box right here. You'll just need to make the judgment call as to which brace you want to use. And hey, here's something you might not realize. The actual amount of airspace that this brace takes up in the enclosure is really small as a percentage of the size of the enclosure. So if you wanted to do two of these braces, it wouldn't hurt a thing. It's going to work out just fine. The other cool thing that my generator is going to do is it's going to give you everything rounded to a quarter of an inch. There are some online <laughs> box building tools that will give you uh, decimal inches and ask you to cut things to 48.93 inches. This one's just going to go ahead and do the work of rounding it for you. Is it 100% accurate? There's always a chance you might be able to figure out an enclosure design that breaks the calculator. And if that does happen, let me know. My advice is to draw these things on paper or on on the computer before you actually start cutting wood because there's absolutely nothing worse than cutting all that wood and finding out that the enclosure is wrong. That's kind of an expensive mistake. And if you were using AI, you'd want to do that anyways. That's true for any subwoofer box design that you get. You want to double check everything, make sure the clearances are right. I know there's a lot of really smart, knowledgeable and skilled people watching these videos that could probably go into the AI and figure out how to make the AI give you a really good subwoofer box. To those people, I say more power to you, to everybody else. This is your tool. This is what you want to use. I'm Justin. This is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.